I'm going to tell a story now. Oh. Um, my mother, Andy Oliver, very good friend of Elizabeth's. Oh, I love Andy. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, that's how I met you. Mm. Um, she last year uh, found uh, fibroids um, in her body and decided to have a hysterectomy and um, went through the process and was in hospital for a few weeks and was like, what am I going to watch? And someone, <laughs> someone... I know where this is going. <laughs> ...guided her... <laughs> towards um, the Real Housewives series. I want to that was. Which ended up ruining both my life and my stepfather's because my <laughs> mum became so addicted to it, every series, and it was the only noise we heard in our house for months and months. And then when I was reading your book, I was like, it was Elizabeth! It was, me. <laughs> it was you! Yes. So I'm very interested in your love because it's not just, it's not a, fl a, a, a uh, what's the word? It's not a fanciful, fleeting no. thing. It's a real deep thing. You love this show and this yes, series and actually you. the way you wrote about it made me look at it very differently thank you because you opened my eyes to the fact that it is shining a light on women who are older and the things that they go through and those things still being very important yes. parts of life divorce aging um uh, breakdowns affairs yes um and I, I suddenly see a housewives very differently mm -hmm. so would you like to tell us what it is you love about it I mean, would I? Yes, <laughs> thank you so much. This is I'm the whole reason the for tonight. I've 20 minutes now. <laughs> no, keep it short um, and sweet. Oh, but oh, uh, we'd love to know, what yeah. is it about house? <laughs> First of all, I'm so happy that I got Andy onto it. I'm, I'm so, so thrilled because it's so her. And, it's, <laughs> but it, and it will be you. Obviously, we are speaking in the heartland of the Real Housewives of Cheshire. Oh, shit, yeah! And um, if there is a Real Housewife <laughs> of Cheshire in the audience, I'm extremely excited. <laughs> um, the reason I love The Real Housewives specifically and what I would consider high quality reality TV more generally mm. is because it really, at its essence, is about what it is to be human. And the interactions, particularly with The Real Housewives, between groups of women, and you're right, of an age group that we don't necessarily see a lot of on scripted drama, certainly not in a convincing way. Mm. The Real Housewives was where I first saw the reality of IVF on the screen. Wow. In The Real Housewives of Orange County, Megan King Edmonds injected herself. What series? Um, it was an early series because it, it was on ITVB, as oh, it yeah. was then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, so it must have been like series four or five, mm. I think, of Real Kay. Housewives of Orange County. Mm. Um, and, and I think they do a fantastic job of showing women in all of their multifaceted complexity. And of course, it is camp and outrageous and extreme at points but it's also vulnerable and beautiful and poignant. Mm. And you get to learn like how you can actually have conflict in a friendship group, and you can actually restore after rupture, and you can kind of carry on and uh, respect each other's power. And I, I just love it for those reasons. For me, and um, I'm probably gonna go a bit too far here for you, it's modern day Dickens, okay? <laughs> Come on, Elizabeth. It is because there are so many, <laughs> there are so many subplots and minor characters, and then you become mm. apprised with the multiverse. Mm. Like mm. I've never watched a Marvel movie, but my multiverse is the Real Housewives. Well, there's many, there's many parts of it. So yes, yes. it is quite. It's an evolving universe. Do you have a favourite? Yes. Okay. Um, the Real Housewives of New York, I think, oh. is an incredible franchise. Um, <laughs> and I actually rewatched it all from the beginning during lockdown because I found it so reassuring. Yes. Now, it goes a bit unhinged the last couple of seasons, of course, but, of but there are some great characters on there. I have, and, watched, and I have watched some like series five, six of that, and there's some classics. Atlanta is there. also great. Mum loves that one. Oh my gosh, that's loves one of my faves. That one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm actually, she really sells it, doesn't she? I feel like. I get it now. I, <laughs> I, it has brought me so much comfort mm. at really difficult points in my life. Oh, and you know what? It's all about friendship. Exactly. Isn't it? The, the men yeah. are secondary. It's about their friendships. Exactly and that. Their connections. And there's actually a chapter in Friendaholic where I talk about an iconic scene from The Real Housewives of Atlanta between Cynthia Bailey and Nene Leakes. Am I, in a, am I in a friendly audience here? Because I'm not sure. Like, 
if I'm losing you. Anyway, the point is they sign a friendship contract. Ah, uh, yes, okay. the contract. So yeah. Cynthia Bailey draws up a friendship contract because they've had loads of fallings out. And she's like, I want to lock you in as my friend. This is what I expect, OK? And at the time, it was ludicrous. I remember watching it being like, that is completely mad. I can't believe Cynthia would do that. Ha, ha, ha. It's so and not like her. So <laughs> not like her. And there were all of these sort of humorous, tongue-in-cheek confessionals afterwards. When I came to write Friendaholic, I rewatched that scene and I was like, I think Cynthia was on to something <laughs> There's here. Something in this. <laughs> because actually what she's trying to do there, she's trying to avoid miscommunication. Mm -hmm. And she's also encouraging her friend to think about what they have to offer as a friend. And it's something that, that Emma taught me. There is a fundamental difference between being friendly and actively pursuing and committing to a friendship. Because if you're committing to a friendship, that takes time. It requires nurture. Um, you want to be able to hit that relational depth and to build up a set of experiences. Mm. And you can't do that for everyone in your life. You simply can't. Mm. And so Emma had this alternative idea of, of drawing up a friendship CV. So <laughs> during lockdown, she moved <laughs> from Winchester to Southsea, and she was at the school gates, and lots of people were being really friendly. She's like, I, I really like them, but I don't necessarily want to be their friend. Right. Because I don't have enough hours in the day. She's like, I want to have a CV that describes me as a willing friendship freelancer. <laughs> the Where occasional like, afternoon. Yes, yes. I've got like eight hours a, a month, and I could do a, 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 a coffee in Costa, but I can't commit to a monthly mini break. But can you imagine <laughs> that kind of clarity? I know. It's it's actually, I think it's a good exercise just to think mm. what your friendship CV or friendship contract might have without mm. actually, you don't have to print it you out. You don't have to actually no. like, get it laminated or anything, no. but like as an exercise. Yeah. Yes. 